What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Um, I know you guys are like, what the heck? The upload schedule is all crazy and I know, in my defense, I actually edited and made an entire video and had it ready to upload last, on Thursday of last week. And my MacBook is a, it's only 128 gigabyte. So like, literally you have to keep the bare minimum of stuff on there and the video was like 25 minutes long it was actually 30 minutes long and then I had to cut it down to 25 and then I kept cutting it down cutting it down and like even at like 20 minutes like most of the content was clipped out of it still the computer wouldn't render it because it didn't have enough memory so pretty much I had to cut my losses with the whole video um, and I had to delete the whole thing so I put something together for you guys. Obviously the transmission, the 47RE swap is already done in the truck. It's not complete. I still have to wire the anteater. I still have to put the torque converter bolts in. I still have to run trans lines and fill it with fluid and that stuff. But as far as the swap, the cross custom cross member is done. Bolting the trans is done. Everything is in. Drive shaft is bolted up, shifter is bolted up. Everything is that the swap would involve is done and complete. Flex plate, all that stuff is all in and ready to go. So the next video you guys see, this truck will be running. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to quickly update you guys. Didn't want to leave you hanging. And it sucks because the video I did make was actually like step by step, very tutorial like, and was very. A very good video I want to say um, I took a lot of time filming it and trying to make it as helpful as I could but unfortunately things happen um, I'm gonna try to get a bigger hard drive to prevent this from happening in the future because the MacBook works flawlessly I love the computer the memory is just terrible so I'm gonna see about trying to get like an internal hard drive swapped out for a bigger one like a 500 or gigabyte or a, a terabyte or Trey was telling me that I could probably do an external hard drive. I'm not really sure. So if any of you guys know anything about computers or MacBooks in general, comment below or like DM me or like something because I really need to figure something out with the MacBook because I can't be having this happen all the time, especially because I'm starting trying to be more consistent for you guys and like produce good quality content that is helpful. So, all right, but that is it for the rant. I'm going to jump right into showing you guys what we had to do to get this swap working. Thanks guys. And if you guys are new to the channel, this is the SLZ Uncut Cars channel and you can uh, expect some helpful videos and just a laid back experience here. So if you guys like what you see, like and subscribe and comment below what you guys think. Thanks. On to the video. You're not going to be able to tell on camera, but it's all painted up. The adapter plate is with the silver accents around there. I have a wrench right there because I'm still putting the converter bolts in. But I'll show you guys underneath. Okay, so we are on the creeper. Let me grab the lights. Okay. So we have the cross member. What we did for the cross member is a two-wheel drive cross member. Normally these are supposed to be flipped up. So you do lose a little bit of ground clearance. Um, I would say this hangs down maybe an inch more than the front cross member, not much. Um, if you do it this way, there's many ways to do this. You could put a straight piece of steel across right here. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. Um, if you have the first gen transmission mount, you could just slot it and move this back or forth. Honestly, the easiest thing would be to just use the factory first gen mount and drill holes in the frame farther, for, farther back. That would be what I would do. But I didn't have the first gen mount because I accidentally sold it with my trans. So we had the second gen mount. So what we did with the second gen mount, which I think is a better design anyways because it's more sturdy, we took a piece of quarter inch steel and put it across where this is hollow. And there's already six holes, three on the back, three on the front of the cross member. And I just drilled three holes, put three bolts through all of it so it's super sturdy. And then drilled the two holes for this <coughs> mount down so there's two bolts down here and then you just have this piece that goes to the transmission that comes 
with the second gen transmission mounts. <clears throat> now, all of that said and done, the transmission will still sit too low. So, to get it more level, what I did was I added spacers on that mount right there, that makes it higher, and then I added spacers right there on that mount. Um, what I used for the spacers was just gas pipe. Um, it's the same thing as any like spacer you can just go buy. It's yeah, it's pretty much just a steel spacer at that point. So um, it's a steel one inch spacer is what I used. I cut it to one inch on each side and this makes it sit at the complete factory um, tilt. There's you don't have to worry about angle or anything. The on the two wheel drives the drive shaft bolts up in the exact same location and the shifter and all of that all works the same. You don't, some people hook up the TV cable again. I don't think I'm going to. They say that you can just zip tie the lever forward. Not 100% sure on that yet. In the next video, when I have a little more clarification, I'll uh, verify on whether you zip tie it forward or backward. I can't remember which one it is. It'd be whichever way is 100% open, is what I'm assuming. Um. And then a lot of people were saying that you have to trim the frame where the starter's at. Um, it turns out you can flip the starter in a different like coordination, and that's what I did, and it kept it away from the frame. Let me see if I can show you. Okay, so if you look at the starter, mine is pretty far away from the frame. Um, my truck isn't actually like rust like this color, like rusty. It's this light makes it look yellowish. I don't know why. But um, the starter would normally be flipped this way, so that big part would be towards the frame. But what I did was I just, the whole pattern is the same, so I just flipped it, and it literally works the same way. There's no difference. So I don't know how other people are doing it, but that's how I did it. Um, some people were saying they had to notch the frame or bend the frame or cut the frame. I didn't have to do any of that. So, And then some people were saying up top where the trans bolts to the engine up top that they had to cut to get clearances to. Um, if you leave the transmission cross member out and bolt everything up first and then jack it up, I didn't have any issues that way. Um, that's the way I've always done it. So if you do it like that, you shouldn't have any problems. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else people have questions about. I just took my factory wiring and kind of zip tied it all up and bundled it off to the side. I don't want to cut it out of the harness just in case f for some reason if I ever wanted to go back to the stock trans for some weird reason. I'd okay, so that's, that's really it. Um, I know it doesn't sound like a lot and it really wasn't as hard as some people make it sound. Like some people make it sound like it's gonna be so hard and you're gonna have to cut this, cut that, remove this. Honestly guys, this was 10 times easier than I ever expected it to be. Not saying it's gonna be like that for every person or every truck. Um, I'm usually pretty good with figuring problems out of the, like with little to no resources. That's just how my brain works. Like if I run into a problem, I can fix it with a small amount of resources. So like for example with the transmission leaning down, like I kind of made some stuff and made it work. I did have to put longer bolts in there by the way. I don't know the thread. I actually had some bolts laying around that were perfect for it. But yeah, you do have to get longer bolts for the secondary mount. The top mount, I didn't. I could use the factory bolts. Um, and then I'll throw some pictures in of the cross member. where I had drilled and I did I'll show you guys I forgot I did have to drill new holes in the frame I just drilled one here and one over there and that's about how far the cross member comes down as you can tell it sits almost level with the front cross member and the rear diff actually sits lower than this cross member too so so you don't really lose a whole lot of ground clearance technically because the rear diff sits way lower um but yeah 
for the four wheel drive guys, I'm not sure what all will be the same on your guys' trucks. I think yours might actually be easier because I think the cross members, all you have to do is cut and slot them and move it back. So the transmission and the second gen adapter plate, actually just the, the adapter plate and the converter, it actually adds an inch and a half. It was either an inch and a half or an inch to the whole drive line. So everything should just be back farther. Um, so just prepare for that. It's really not that hard. You can literally use all the factory parts, just move them back. Um, you do need a second gen starter. You need a second gen adapter plate, a second gen flex plate, and obviously the lockup torque converter, which would be for 47RE, and then you need a 47 or a 48RE. And then as far as controlling, you can go standalone uh, transmission controller, which I have an anteater from Firepunk, or you can go uh, manual valve body ratchet shifter. Um, they both are about the same cost, to be completely honest. I would say the anteater is the easier, less complicated route in terms of mechanical, like if the valve body is not right, you can't just get on a computer and fix it. You have to take the transmission back apart versus the anteater. If the tune's not right, you retune it. If the if you still come come into problems, literally you can have someone send you a tune. So, and drivability, it stays like an automatic. You have to deal with a stupid ratchet shifter. That's the reason why I spent the money on the standalone. I just think in the long run I'll be happier with with a anteater standalone because I drive this truck a lot. I like to drive it to work. I like to drive it around. I like to take it on, on long trips, and I just think a ratchet shifter would get boring and or annoying really. Now I will say that it, it would be cool to be able to hold out shifts and shift manually when you want to get rowdy. But I think with the anteater you have different tune options so I guess I could just make a tune where the gears stay out longer um, to give it that, to really pull all of the um, efficiency out of the turbo. I guess you could say just really wind out the RPM per gear. So. And you do have a button on the anteater display for overdrive off. So I know that's what I did before with my shifter or my little switches. I would downshift it out of overdrive and like rev it out that way and kind of launch it when I would do like roll races. Not like saying this thing's a race truck or anything, but I have roll raced it before and that's what I did to get it spooled up. So um, I'll show you guys the anteater stuff real quick. Okay, so here's here's all the anteater stuff. I had it super organized, but I just started taking it apart because I'm going to start wiring it soon. But this is the wiring you get. This is literally all the wiring you got to run. Just this little, you get this pigtail that goes to the main controller, and then you have two connectors that go to the trans. This goes to the uh, in cab controller, this gray wire, and then this is your TPS sensor input and I believe that's just a ground. That's literally all you gotta run. Not complicated at all. You got a power for this fuse. A relay. I think it might actually be an inline fuse. It's just, and then here's your controller. You just mount this on your firewall. It has that main connector. And then this is your little, uh, what you'd put in the, in the cab to switch tunes and have your overdrive off. As you can tell, it just has, this is where you would plug it in for the computer to tune it. And this is the main connector from the actual standalone. Um, I know a lot of people mount them up on the dash, but since I have a push button start, I think I'm gonna mount mine right here. From the driver's seat, it's actually very visible, believe it or not, and it's actually not that uncomfortable to kind of flip this off and on. Plus, it would do a job of covering this hole right here. So I think that's where I'm going to mount mine, just because I really don't want to have to tear my dash out again to run wiring. And it's just easier to wire, run wiring up the column, especially since I have to have a key on powered um, source anyway. So, and then with the anteater comes instructions and charts telling you how to install it. And then
here's the program that you you would plug in, download to your computer. The tuning software for the actual controller, and that's really it, guys. Um, like I said, with the anteater, I think it's less complex. Um, you have to deal with less of a headache it's pulling the trans part, testing pressures. It's just a whole big thing. Okay, but that's really it, guys, that I can think of at this very moment. Um, this is kind of rushed. I'm trying to make this video so I can get it up for you guys because I know I haven't uploaded this week. Um, so pretty much that's going to wrap it up. In the next video of the truck, it will be running, at least it should be, um, unless there's any type of catastrophic failures between now and that time period. But right now the plan is to get the truck running um, by the weekend or over the weekend. Today is Tuesday. And drive it all next week. You know, check out any bugs, make sure it's not leaking nothing, make sure everything's good to go, and then drive it to UCC next, not this weekend, but next. Um, I always wanted to go to UCC, I always wanted to drive my truck to UCC, so what better time would it be to hurry up and rush and get a truck done that's been sitting for months and drive it three hours away? Now would be the best time, I think. Those are always the best ones, really. The rush and drive kind of deals yeah those those are the good ones so be looking forward to that content hopefully we don't have to break down and fix anything or maybe it'll just be a smooth ride all the way there we'll see um sorry that you guys got held up on content for a minute and i know this video wasn't everything i wanted it to be um the video i did edit for you guys actually was like very tutorial like step step by step everything to do I did a really good job at making a video and it just sucks that I couldn't upload it for you guys. Um, I promise I'm going to get that taken care of so that uploading content isn't an issue anymore. But with that being said guys, I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope you took some information from this. In the next video I'm hoping to break it down a little better and like show it actually working. Um, and for those that don't know. Swapping a 47RE into your truck, the benefit of that is lockup. With lockup, you produce a lot more power because it locks the entire driveline and there's no slip in the trans. Um, so these trucks tend to be a lot quicker because they come factory with a non-lockup converter which slips 24-7 um, in every gear and makes for a lot of power loss at the trans. So lockup converters makes for a lot of rowdiness so yeah see you guys in the next video deuces